Good morning. Welcome to this time of worship at the Wallace Presbyterian Church in Wallace, North Carolina. My name is Philip Gladden. I'm the minister here at the church. I welcome all who are here in person in the sanctuary and all who are gathered with us on our live stream. It is good to be with you on this Sunday before Thanksgiving, which is designated as Christ the King Sunday. It is the last Sunday of the church year. The church calendar begins with Advent. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. I'm so glad all of you are here with us and those of you who are joining us via our live stream. The beautiful flowers in the sanctuary today are given in loving memory of Mr. and Mrs. Edward F. Johnston and the Reverend Edward F. Johnston, Jr. by C.J. and Dotsy Caproni and the Cottle, Cutler, Johnston and Quinn families. And most of them are here today and we're glad that you are and thank you for putting those flowers in. Today we take up a special offering, which we do every year. Um, the name might be still a little bit unfamiliar, Children's Hope Alliance. We used to take it up. It was called Barium Springs Home for Children or Grandfather Home for Children. Um, it's just a new name, but there's information about that on the back of the bulletin about the purpose of the offering and how you can contribute to the offering. And also there will be a Bible study uh, this week, tomorrow night by Zoom, but not on Wednesday morning. And if you want to participate, you can check your email tomorrow and the Zoom invitation and link will be included in that email. It's good to be with you as we worship God today and uh, ruling elder Clay Blue is assisting in worship today. Please join me in reading the opening sentences found on the screen. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Our first hymn is number 367, Come Ye Thankful People Come. God calls us to be His children and to live in His kingdom. Let us come before our King with our confession. First, our unison prayer, our silent prayers, and then our assurance of pardon. Please join me. Sovereign God, we confess that although we willingly say that Jesus is King, we often fail to bow our knees before Him. Instead, we grant our allegiances to the relationships 
and material goods of this world. In your mercy, hear our prayer of confession. Grant us the humility to bow before you, the ruler of all nations, so that we may be loyal servants in your kingdom, through your Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, hear our prayers. Through the death and resurrection of Christ the King, we have been given a pardon from God. For He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son He loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Let us sing God's praises for His mercy in our lives. Please be seated. Good morning to all the children of the church and to everyone else. Um, you know, Thursday is Thanksgiving, and that's a special day, although it's going to be kind of different this year for a lot of families because some people can't get together because of the coronavirus. But you know, typically we think about Thanksgiving, you think about a lot of food. Think about turkey and maybe a ham and dressing and potatoes and pies and dessert and all sorts of things. And we all look forward to that. But you know, some people don't have enough to eat, not just on Thanksgiving, but all through the year for, for whatever reason. And right now, because of the, the pandemic that you've heard so much about, um, some people have lost their jobs and they just don't have enough uh, food for their families. So our church has a food pantry, which some of you have seen, I'm sure. And we've had it for a long, long time. I think about 30 years. It was started by somebody for his Eagle Scout project and it has just grown and grown and grown. And I brought some pictures today to show you. And someday when we can all get back together again, We'll have to get all the children up to see the food pantry again and see how much it's grown. So I want to show you these pictures that I took this morning. So there's, it looks kind of like a grocery store, doesn't it? But the folks who are working in the food pantry, you can't really read it, but everything's labeled cereal and mac and cheese and Vienna sausage and peanut butter and pancake mix and fruit and jelly and pasta. So there's one picture. That's one corner of our food pantry, which is called the Helping Hands Food Pantry. And here's another corner of our food pantry, and that has corn and green beans and vegetables and soup and toothbrushes and toothpaste and soap and that sort of thing. Now, about two weeks ago, folks out at River Landing had a food drive and we got all the uh, food from that over 400 bags of food. And so it filled up the food pantry and we had nowhere else to put. Well, we didn't have enough room in the food pantry. So I brought another picture. And this is in the room where you usually have children's church, which will start back whenever we can do it safely. And we had to fill that up with food. And there's even more than that. So look at all that food waiting to be given out. And then I got one more picture to show you. This just came in this week. And these are bags of food. If you've gone to the Piggly Wiggly recently, I think you, when you buy your groceries, you can also make a contribution and some food bags were put together and we got a hundred bags of food. And so when people come in, they can get bags of food and we get food from Food Lion so people can get fresh produce and fruit and desserts and breads and meats and everything else. The other thing I wanted to show you that you've maybe seen before is this is what people get when they come in. It's very heavy, kind of hard to hold up. 
two bags of food. And I'm not going to unpack both of them, but cake mix and cereal and what else? Mac and cheese. You can see all sorts of things, but it's not just a bunch of stuff. They're packed together to make uh, some meals so that you can make full meals, breakfast, lunch, and supper for a family for a few days. It's a wonderful ministry that our church has, and it's supported by people all through the community, and it's something that you can help with sometime if you bring food to the church. Or another way that you help and have helped in the past, and you'll get to help again one day, is when we took up our hunger offering, our path offering, and you carry the baskets up and down the aisle and take up the money, that helps support our food pantry. So I guess what I'm saying is it's a good ministry to have and lots and lots of people help with it of all ages. They give money and they give food. They come and they volunteer. But this is what I'd like to ask you to do. On Thursday, when you sit down for Thanksgiving dinner, wherever you are, if it maybe it's just you and your parents or maybe you get together with your whole family and you get ready to eat a delicious meal, be thankful for that. But also remember people that don't have enough, don't have as much as we have. And let's see if we can figure out a way to keep helping people who need food and other things. And most of all, need the love of Jesus just like we have. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you for all the blessings of our lives. And we, we are sorry when we just think, well, we're supposed to have those and we forget that other people don't have them. Lord, on Thanksgiving Day, help us enjoy our families and our, the food that we have, but help us remember the people that need our help and help us to love them just as you've loved us. We thank you for the food pantry and the way it helps people in our community. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. ready to hear God's word, please join with me in our prayer for illumination. It'll be on the screen. It's also printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are the giver of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It is your will to restore all things to Christ, whom you have anointed priest forever and ruler of creation. Open the eyes of our hearts this morning and teach us to know the hope to which you have called us, so that we might learn to see you in the face of those in need around us. Amen. Our epistle lesson today is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 through 16. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses in the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who is his, in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, it is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. For 
for almost six months now, we've been hearing um, readings from the Gospel of Matthew, messages from Matthew, and today is the last one. Um, next week we'll begin hearing texts from different places in the New Testament about Advent. Um, in the last several weeks, we've been hearing stories about uh, Jesus' run-ins with the religious officials. And the story today is the final parable in Matthew 25. It's the last public teaching of Jesus in his life. Um, right after this, uh, the religious leaders plot to kill Jesus, and then uh, he institutes the Lord's Supper, and the final week plays out. But I invite you to listen for the Word of God, Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. And then remember that in these parables, Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And this one is about, um, it has a future sense to it, but it also talks about what to do in the present time. Listen for God's Word. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Duplin Christian Outreach Ministries endeavors to serve Duplin County citizens who are experiencing a crisis. We provide crisis assistance as resources are available and upon verification of need. DCOM helps people when they are experiencing a crisis. A crisis is defined as an unexpected situation or event that occurs beyond the control of the individual, the family, or the household. That is the description of our local crisis center on the website, duplinchristian.com. The website also lists core values of the ministry, including respect, which is defined as treat people as they should be treated. This interdenominational ministry, now in its 16th year of service, is unashamedly Christian. When the steering committee selected the name, we intentionally included the word Christian, even though we knew that that might disqualify us from receiving grants here and there. The steering team members agreed Christian should be in the name because Jesus Christ and his commands are the motivation for the ministry. People who come 
to Duplin Christian Outreach Ministries should know that they are visiting a Christian ministry. On the other hand, when someone walks through the door at 514 South Norwood Street in Wallace, we have no idea if the person is a Christian. And it doesn't matter. What matters is if the person is in need due to a crisis. At most board of directors meetings, we pray that all who work and volunteer at DCOM will welcome and treat every person who walks through the door as if he or she were Jesus Christ himself. If that description of DCOM's ministry sounds like the parable of the sheep and the goats, well, that's not a coincidence. Many Christian ministries are inspired and guided by the words of the king in this parable. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Four years ago, and then again two years ago, the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA began what is called the Matthew 25 Initiative. In answer to the question, what is a Matthew 25 church? The General Assembly noted that Matthew 25, 31 to 46 calls all of us to actively engage in the world around us so that our faith comes alive and we wake up to new possibilities to act boldly and compassionately to serve people who are hungry, oppressed, imprisoned, or poor. We recognize Christ's urgent call to be a church of action where God's love, justice, and mercy shine forth and are contagious. And we rejoice how our re-energized faith can unite all Presbyterians for a common and holy purpose, our common identity to do mission. Since March, and especially in the past few months, many more people have been coming to our Helping Hands Food Pantry via Duplin Christian Outreach Ministries. The numbers have just gone way up, so it's a good thing we have all this food in the food pantry. Baptists on Mission have been distributing food boxes weekly at various points throughout Duplin County so people don't have to drive a long way to one central location. It happens at Poston Baptist Church every week. Every week at the Poston Baptist Church, Baptists on Mission give out boxes of food to 125 to 150 families. That's just at that one location. Two years ago, in the aftermath of Hurricane Florence, people were in desperate need of help with food, with shelter, with clothing, with water, with health care. What quickly became evident is that while Florence might have caused some of those crisis situations, on the other hand, Florence just pulled back a curtain on problems and needs that are already there and all around us economic disparity and lack of affordable housing, lack of emergency housing, food deserts, just to name a few. So thank God we have helping ministries such as DCOM and Baptists on Mission and the Charity Rebuild Center and Blessings in Store right down the street and many, many others. And thank God that people are generous with their financial contributions and gifts in kind and their volunteer hours. The ministries wouldn't exist otherwise. But here's a nagging question that underlies all of these ministries. Why do we have to have them in the first place? And the answer isn't because people have needs. Well, I guess that is the answer. We have to have them because people have needs. But that's not really what the question is getting at. The question is meant to get at the reasons why people have so many needs. It's necessary and it's much appreciated, but it's also fairly easy to write a donation check or to fill a bag with groceries or to donate some items to the thrift store. The challenge comes in trying to address the underlying causes of the pressing needs in our community. 
in an article about the Matthew 25 initiative called, What Does Being a Matthew 25 Church Mean? The author writes, being a Matthew 25 church means you are actively engaged in one or more of the following ministries. Building congregational vitality by challenging people and congregations to deepen their faith and get actively and joyfully engaged with their community and with the world. Dismantling structural racism by advocating and acting to break down the systems, the practices, and the thinking that underlie discrimination, bias, prejudice, and oppression of people of color. And eradicating systematic or systemic poverty by working to change laws, policies, plans, and structures in our society that perpetuate economic exploitation of people who are poor. That's a big challenge. There are two interesting twists in this parable about the sheep and the goats from Matthew 25. First, did you notice that the ones on the right and the ones on the left ask the very same question of the king except about their actions at the end? Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison? and took care of you, or did not take care of you. The difference in their questions, however, is striking. The ones who did these things had no idea they were serving the king when they fed, watered, clothed, tended, and visited those people in need. In other words, they weren't doing it for the glory. They weren't doing it to earn brownie points. They did it because they saw the need. And yet the ones who didn't do the very same things seem to imply that, you know, if we'd only known it was you, Lord, if we'd known it was the king, then we certainly would have fed and watered and clothed and tended and visited those in need. And that's sort of the point of the parable, isn't it? And that brings us to the second interesting twist in this parable. On this Christ the King Sunday, we are going to sing, O worship the King, all glorious above. And we affirm in our faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that though he was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as something to be held onto, grasped, used for his own benefit, but he gave it up. He emptied himself and he became like us and he was obedient even to the point of dying on the cross. So that's right. On this Christ the King Sunday, when we sing hymns of praise to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, it's as if the Son of Man himself has come down from his throne of glory and taken his place in the line at the soup kitchen or under the bridge or in the homeless shelter or walk through the door at Duplin Christian Outreach Ministries. As you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. Think about it. Think about that. The one who told this parable about life in the kingdom as God's people is the same one who gave up everything for our sake who became poor that we might become rich toward God and went to the cross to serve us in our time of need. I imagine it's probably dangerous to hold up Mother Teresa as an example. And she's a saint. But she's a saint and she's an example because of what she did and how she lived her life in obedience to her calling from God, not because she was better than everybody else, not because she was somehow perfect, but because of what she did. And here are some of her answers when people asked her why she did what she did for a lifetime among the desperately poor in Calcutta. She said, I see Jesus in every human being. I say to myself, this is hungry Jesus, I must feed him. This is sick Jesus. This one has leprosy or gangrene. I must wash him and tend to him. 
I serve because I love Jesus. She was asked, why do you do these things among the poor? And she answered, every one of them is Jesus in disguise. She was asked, why do you do these things among the poor? And she said that she saw the face of Jesus in the face of each sick and dying person she helped. And she asked the whole world to look for Jesus' face there too. As one writer has put it, God continues to come where we least expect God to be. In the plight of the homeless, on the side of the poor, in the face of the needy, and in the company of the imprisoned. If we can truly see the face of Jesus in every face, then we can continue to be engaged in helping ministries that are so very needed. If we open our eyes and our hearts to see Jesus in disguise, then we can get on to do the hard and necessary work to be a Matthew 25 church. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for your kingdom to come here now, bringing a kingdom of justice, righteousness, hope, love, peace, mercy, and grace for all. Lord, we ask that you rule in our hearts, lead us in this world, and govern over your kingdom. Amen. list of concerns to share with you today, some joys. Um, we extend our sympathy to the family of Judy Mills, who died on Monday the 16th, and her service was at Rockfish Cemetery on Thursday. Some of you may know this, but uh, Donald Buckner from Rose Hill died last evening. Um, I think Dave texted me around supper time. I texted with Gloria today, and um, they'll be making some arrangements. But let's keep Gloria and Dave and their whole family in our prayers at Mr. Buckner's death. Other prayer concerns, let's pray for Andrea and Zach Castine's family. COVID has hit their house, and so they've been quarantined all week. And Zach says Andrea is resting and in good spirits but everybody in the family's got it. Um, let us pray for Roy Letiri, who's been diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and will begin chemotherapy treatments on Friday of this week at the Zimmer Center in Wilmington. We pray for Ann Carter recovering from back surgery, for Joel Coleman recovering from hip surgery, for Dottie Obenauer, recovering from surgery, all doing well. Joey and Rita Brinkley have asked us to pray for their neighbor, Carol Dixon. Kelly Norris has asked us to pray for her cousin's daughter, who is a single mother with two children in her 30s, who has been admitted to the hospital. She's being tested for COVID-19. She has underlying conditions that are a complicating factor. Kelly and Bill also asked me to express on their behalf their appreciation for all the cards and prayers during the time of their loss. Bill's mother and Kelly's second mom, Aunt Pat, died within 12 hours of each other a couple of weeks ago. And Kelly says, we will cherish the prayer shawls given to Bill's mother, Hilda, and to my Aunt Pat. Let us pray for everyone affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, for those who are gathering for safe family reunions. Pray for people who are disappointed at canceled plans. That includes me and Nancy, uh, since our son and his friends aren't gonna be able to come from New York City. So we're right there with everybody else. We pray for people who have grief around the table this Thanksgiving, for folks who are sick, for doctors and nurses, frontline workers, 
responders. We pray for our government officials who are making such difficult decisions. We pray for the hope of vaccines that they will come soon and be effective. And in the midst of all this, let us give thanks to God for his goodness and his love for us in Jesus Christ. And let us truly be thankful. You know, maybe this year, as disappointing as it might be in many ways, it'll be an opportunity to think about what Thanksgiving's really all about and to be truly thankful for the things that we do have. So let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who lived a life obedient to you and out of love for us. Lord, help us to live a life pleasing in your sight, a life of love and a life that extends the care and compassion of Jesus Christ to all that we meet. Lord, we pray for James and for Jennifer and Susan and their families on their grief upon Judy's passing. Lord, we will miss her, and we thank you for the beautiful witness of her life in so many ways. We pray that you will strengthen James and his family. Lord, we pray for the Buckner family. We pray for Dave and Gloria and for all of her family upon Mr. Buckner's dying. We thank you that he has entered into your joy and that he has found relief. Lord, be with that family that is so beloved in our community and in Rose Hill. Let them know of our love and support for them in the days to come. Lord, we pray for people who are sick. We do pray for Andrew and Zach and for their household. We pray for their safety and we pray for their recovery. Lord, be with them. We pray for Roy and for Betty. We pray that his treatments will bring this cancer into remission and help him to feel better. Lord, pray with, for him and for his family in the days to come as he goes through these treatments. We thank you that Ann and Joel and Dottie are recovering well from their surgeries and that they have made a difference in their lives. We can pray for Carol Dixon for the need that she has that you know about. And Lord, we pray for Kelly's cousin's daughter and for all who are being diagnosed with COVID-19 and having challenges with their health right now. Lord, in this unbelievably difficult time, we pray for safe family reunions. We pray for people who are disappointed. We pray for people who are grieving at empty chairs around the table. We pray for people who are sick and alone. We pray for doctors and nurses who are exhausted. We pray for government officials who are trying to do what seems to be the impossible. We thank you for the hope of the vaccines. We pray that they will make a tremendous difference. Lord, help us to do what's necessary to keep ourselves and our neighbors safe in these difficult times. Lord, in this Thanksgiving season, we do thank you most of all for your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us, that we might have life eternal and life abundant here today. Forgive us when we take our blessings for granted. This year especially, Lord, help us to be particularly thankful for the things that we do have and can enjoy and with the promise of your future. As always, we ask all of these things in the great name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Now we bring our tithes and our offerings and our special offering for the Children's Hope Alliance. Thank you for your continued faithful support of the ministries of this church. If you're watching today and regularly attend another church, or if you're here in person and regularly attend another church, I encourage you to continue to support the ministry of your home congregation. But let us worship God with our giving. God of mercy and compassion, may the gifts we give through your church help the hungry, the thirsty, the imprisoned. Lord, may our whole being be centered on seeing the opportunities to make your love real to a hurting world as we follow in Christ's holy, loving way. Amen. Our affirmation of faith is taken straight from the scriptures, Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Apparently it was an early Christian hymn. I would love to hear what the tune was, but we'll just say the words about uh, affirming Jesus Christ's Lordship. Please join me. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Our closing hymn is, O Worship the King, All Glorious Above.
in gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, let us strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. May God bless you with a happy Thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you.